Hey, hello, we're on. We did it. Is Corey on? Oh, I don't know. Go on, say something. Say something. Yeah, Corey, Corey, Corey's on, Corey's on, Corey's on. Hello, oh, okay. everyone. <laughs> Welcome oh. to the Nerd On Update, the weekly show where oh, we talk about the nerdy news and answer questions from you, the people. Um, Why is this in this fucking thing? Uh, hello, so everyone. So people can green screen uh, wieners. <laughs> That's all I need is just one <laughs> square, and then someone's like, "Okay, I can, I can do, I can do something with that." I can work uh, with this. I can yeah. work with this. Um, hello. Uh, we got we got some news today. Uh, obviously, you could tell we're 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 starting. We're we're shooting from the hip. We're going cowboy style. Um, coming in hot, baby. Coming in hot. Uh, immediately. Uh, Corey, want to tell us how's things going? How's the weekend? What's up? Oh man, I well, I've been sitting at this desk for the last hour, just getting ready for this show. Not stressed at all, or coming in late, uh, because I had a kid. Who An was, hour? Yeah, anyway, yeah, no, I've that's a lie. I I sat down uh, like a minute ago, ago, and Tom Tom <laughs> held 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 the show for me, uh, very kindly, just uh, parental duties. Uh, weekend though. I don't remember how my weekend was. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. What was this weekend? Well, Mother's Day was nice. Uh, Mother's Day, we went to the beach, and we announced that Dana's pregnant. Uh, so Juniper is going to be a big old sister. Uh, and she has no idea what that means. When we asked her if she wants to hold a baby, she said, I can't want to. Um, so, yeah, man. Um, I think Saturday was just a chill day, get some stuff ready in the house. Um, we might be getting some work done on the house, so we had a had a conversation with some some potential contractors. We'll see. Things are things are happening because we have to make room for another human being in the house. Uh, I other than other than that, I haven't played any magic since I played with you last, Tom. So, uh, whenever that was, two Fridays ago, and I'm f itching for it, like itching for some magic. What are you shaking your head at? That's called an addiction. <laughs> That's called hey. a problem. <laughs> look, hey, no, Tom, look, some people on Friday nights, every Friday night, they go out and have drinks with their friends or every Saturday night at the end of the work week, they go out and have drinks with their friends or, you know, people love to sit down and make sure they watch every sports game. My thing is I want to sit at a table and sling some cardboard with somebody's after a long week of work. Uh, I feel like that's fine. I feel like that's okay. Hey, uh, and when I haven't had that, when I haven't had my my R and R for two, two weeks, uh, I get a little antsy. I want it to happen. Hey man, so. hey man, hey man. It's uh, no judge. I can I'm stop just... anytime I want to. Hey man, hey man. I just no can't judge. stop. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying it. You know, and I'm just <laughs> like when one of my good friends is like, oh Tom, all I want to do is crack packs. I don't want to buy singles. I'm like, you have a problem. Like well, I don't, well, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not telling you I'm better than you. I'm not telling you to go KYS. I'm just saying, like, that's a problem. It's yeah. it's like your 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 recent confession to me on text. You're like, Tom, I've been blinded. I understand. I'm like, I'm not <laughs> saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying I'm not denying the truth. The truth. The tr truth will set you free. The, like we just talking about. Yeah. Do you want to tell me what I said? <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm gonna just say this, and then you could say the story. I went when I went out to to Charlotte to hang out with their friend. First thing I said, I was like, "We out here looking for bitches." That's me. I'm bitches because when you go out, you have to find yourself in this time that we're <laughs> self discovering and creating ourselves. <laughs> like the truth of the matter oh, is, man. we're looking for bitches, and I'm bitches. We're looking for me. Yeah. Um. Yeah, tell 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 the story. Tell the confession. Tell the realization in life. So Tom and I, we play magic uh, a bit together, and lately I'm racking my brain, going, Tom always curbs me early. Like, what is this? What is happening? Uh, talk about being. I don't curb you early. I just say everyone gets one, <laughs> then I go. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, but I was like, what is what? Tom's always like worried about my decks. What's happening? uh he's always making deals with mark what's what how do i get on the other side of this and i just had this realization we had this conversation about i was watching a game nights episode and josh lee kwai played shurikai and it was a deck i was building i was like man that looked terrible to play against but also 
I've never seen a. I think one of the top comments was like, I've never seen a deck that said kill Josh first more, and yet nobody killed Josh. And I went, oh, fuck. That's why Tom goes out. I play combo decks, which they'll just out of nowhere. You know, the whole point is you get the, you assemble the Voltron pieces uh, of the Megazord, and it just goes, I win. Uh, and it doesn't tell, it's, you know, the, most of the decks I try to build don't telegraph it because I don't want to be like, hey, look at me. I'm almost winning. Uh, if you ask me, I'll tell you, but I won't telegraph it through what I'm playing. Mark plays Stompy decks, which nothing wrong with that, but you can see it, it telegraphs what it's doing. You're like, I'm making a 14 14, and I'm going to try to swing at your face for it. And I went, Tom, I've been blind. I see that you, your professor, your crim, always going, I'm hitting Josh. I'm going to hit Josh because I don't know what the fuck he's doing, and that's fine. I know what Mark's doing. I'll make a deal with him because at any time I can go kill the big thing, and that's that. And I went, that's that's on me for not realizing that. Is that an interesting story to anyone else but myself? No. <laughs> but it was like it was like one in the morning. I was so tired, and I was like, I'm the guy. I'm the guy that, you know, uh, and I'll admit this too. Like, when Tom and I first started playing, we played with, like, Mark and our friends Neil, stuff like that, and most of them would go after Tom and not me for some reason. And we even talked about, I was like, nobody's attacking me. I don't know what it is. Uh, and so then Tom started attacking me and I went, Oh, okay. I couldn't pay Neil to hit you. No, I'm just like, no. what the I, fuck fact, is wrong with you? Times, there were multiple times I told him to hit me. And he went, I think I'm just going to swim with Tom. I'm like, what the fuck? I was like, what, what okay. the fuck is I like? And the thing is like, if I play Hawkball, Hawkball is probably the most explosive deck that I've ever played with, mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, turn four, I have 30 damage on board, and it might have uh, Island Walk. And then I'm like, cool, I get it. You, but then if you start picking my shit off, I'm like, cool, I get it. Mm -hmm. In some decks, especially your deck, some decks, you can't pick one or two things off. You have to, like, exile all enchantments, exile all well, artifacts. Yeah. And it's and like, the that's the weird thing. removal is player removal. That well, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't even like the thing is like this. I don't even like. I don't want to kill you, get you out of the game. It's more like, I'm gonna put you at like 22, so that the game's not a breeze. So you're having to yeah. make a little bit more like life threatening decisions, and that's fine. Yeah. I don't want it. I hate. I hate your the Josh. Shit. I hate the like. He's at 41. He's fucking throwing out four artifacts, and everyone's like, oh man. Voxy's looking really scary with their one shield I'm like, the <laughs> fuck are you talking about, man? Like one board wipe, one exile, one it's target me. removal. It's like, but so like, yeah, your your stuff. It's like there's a lot of different pieces. It's like, okay, yeah. he's refilling his hand. He's having some uh, like countermeasures. He can untap his stuff. Mark's like, I make one guy. I'm like, okay, <laughs> one guy. And Here's the thing. Mark is very terrifying if, if unchecked, but I have seen with a few of his decks, not all of his decks, some of his decks are very hard to take apart. And I don't, I don't mean that. I'm just saying in general, there's been a few where I've seen his commander get killed three or four times. And he goes, I don't think my deck works anymore. <laughs> Cause it's like, you killed the big thing. You killed the big thing a lot. Uh, and I do try to build decks that are like, okay, if you kill my commander, how do I, how else do I win here? His Rift sure deck that that... is the most resilient I've seen. Yeah, Rith is terrifying. Rith uh, is like, I was like, I hate it. But, and, that, and he's got like aura shards and that shit. So it's like, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. But uh, man, I've seen, I've now, I've never seen a Bane of Progress. And I've seen him fucking flash that. I'm like, this is a monstrosity. Yeah. I, uh, so I built a group hug deck. <laughs> who who, who is it? The jellyfish? Quain. Who's Quain? He's the little rabbit boy. Oh. Little rabbit boy. And it's true group hugs. It's not like I make a bunch of snake group hugs. It is everybody's going to draw and everyone's going to leave me alone. Ooh, I see a 2024 Queen looking anime girl. Is that oh, right? the, the rabbit one, dude? Yeah, no. I bought I bought the this I bought the 4 cent one. <laughs> what is is that, is that one? real the anime one. girl one? No, that's an that's a proxy. Oh, There's okay, a year of the rabbit one though that oh, they okay. had that came out in a secret layer. But that's that my cool. guy, man. Uh, I like the jellyfish uh, one. I know. I was between him and the jellyfish, but I have more piece. I already have the whole deck for him like in what, my arsenal. What's the so boy? Like, yeah. I think I have the jellyfish. Glump yeah, or whatever Glunch, the name? bestower at the beginning of end step. Choose a player. <laughs> choose another player. Choose another player. He, he was my – I actually preferred that choice, but <laughs> I would have had to buy a whole new deck for it. And I was like, nah, I want to use the lot. card. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Anyway. So my weekend – 
Um, I got rootin' tootin' uh, cowboy life at a nonprofit. Everyone who might be following me on social might be thinking, "Oh, I'm just doing cool, whatever the f- whatever fuck." But uh, I I help out nonprofits. I'm part of the community. I do some shit. Um, is it charity work? I mean. I do work for them. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, I got to play some some blackjack, wear a little cowboy hat, um, see what uh, the city of Burbank has to offer in terms of uh-huh. their, uh, their um, influential and privileged folk, which is always a very interesting thing. Everyone... Uh, I feel like I'm becoming there's – a, there's a chef out there for all you listeners and watchers, if you're not aware. His name is Sir Sir Lee, a.k.a. Uh, Iron Chef Dad. Uh, he makes a bunch of different uh, fast food stuff and turns it gourmet. And every time he addresses the audience, he says, children. Um, so I'm getting older in my life as I think about it. Uh, so children, um, they say it's healthy for you to interact with people who are like 10 years or 20 years older than you and people who are like children. So – Interact with people outside your age range. Also, interact with people outside your tax brackets. Because that, you know, might might just shift your thinking a little bit. Who knows? Um, what else happened? Saturday. Um, Saturday, I stayed home and edited a fuck ton of videos. Everyone who's on the Discord and on Patreon saw a flood of videos <laughs> that i've been working on I, that like we've been promising for such a long time that i'm like i gotta do this then i gotta do this then i gotta do this and then we released our um x-men uh animated series reaction videos uh which is on our youtube now you can check it out leave a comment help out the algorithm um it looks like people like it um i got so we had the first two episodes out uh you can check out more or i guess some more of them will come out but i'm, I'm having to make more it, it, t- it takes a long time um started the f- watch so during edits i found the thing i like to watch while i edit and the ed- thing i'm watching is fucking sopranos uh that shit goes that shit goes with editing sopranos sopranos just fucking watching tony just being like uh such a sad man um <laughs> had to fill out a lot of random applications and crap like that uh, Sunday was Mother's Day, and I felt a little woozy, so I didn't do the things I wanted to do. But around the evening, I started feeling a little mother? better. What's up? Did you call your mother? I did call. I did call. I called my mom. Uh, <laughs> cool thing. She didn't answer, and she just texted me and was just like, <laughs> because she called me on Saturday. She said, hey, there's an emergency. I'm like, oh, okay. I was going to call you tomorrow, but okay, I'll help you out with this emergency. Next day, I call her. She don't answer. And I was like, hey, I tried calling you. Just want to let you know. Happy Mother's Day. She's like, cool. Love you. I was like, okay. I guess that's what I'm going to get. Um, but uh, end up afterwards uh, going to the movies and watching the little Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. And uh, Oh, you saw it? I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. Um, interesting, in, you know, interesting perspective where the story is. Who, who's, who's? There's a character in there that when you watch a query, you're like, this is the greatest character of all time. They need to make more, more movies of this character. And I think this is one of those characters. Like, this is an archetype of character that I was like, this character needs to be in every movie with an ensemble. Like, this is a oh. really well written character. Like that type of character, or just that character specifically. I mean, it's a talking orangutan. <laughs> so, I mean, if it was in every movie, I mean, like, I don't know how we explain this in the next, you know, Batman movie. But anyways, we did a lot of talking about the weekend and yes. not the weekend. So let's talk about some news. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the week. Uh, before uh, we get started, we got to clap it, clap it up for ba- bad replay. Oh, yeah. This is Josh. Uh, this is for Caesar. You know what's funny? The symbol uh, this is baby baby spoiler, but not a real spoiler for plot. The symbol they use for Caesar, like oh, the gospel of Caesar in this world, is fucking colorless mana. It's a circle with the fucking diamond in it. Oh, it is. And I'm like the waist. I was like, that's colorless mana. What the fuck? It's, it's, uh, it's colorless mana and magic. It, it was. Uh, um. It was this. It yeah. Was, it, it was. It was. Uh, it was this. It was that little thing. Anyways, go on. So you got news? I do. It's really. It's really quiet. Quick news. There was just another bunch of leaks for Modern Horizon Three, 
uh, Magic the Gathering uh, coming out soon. And this set looks to be just absurdly power crept. And I don't it's think I'm excited about it. It is a lot, man. I don't know if you've seen any of the new ones, but there's literally a, a new commander coming out. It's one Abzan and it's Field of the Dead on it. Yeah. And then yeah. also also lands have in your graveyard have dredge too which i don't know if you're familiar with dredge but it's probably the most busted if you mill Infinity. two things then something happens. if you were going to draw instead you can mill two and return it yeah it's it's dumb um so that's busted there's also a new goblin uh that was spoiled that says pay one life sacrifice a creature create a treasure there's no way they're gonna break that ever um so like aristocrats you know which is which is a super underperforming archetype uh <laughs> needed that uh needed that bit of bu uh, beef so i'm really excited for that um but the the last bit of news here is that they had a new ban list announced today uh and stickers from infinity banned uh they're feeling like it was commander's the only one that didn't get banned in which i'm bummed at but uh, yeah, I was gonna say, they I was said like... it made for a messy for like legacy and and modern and stuff like that. It was just too confusing and it was too much and it made for an unfun play environment, uh, which I agree. I think stickers are probably the worst thing they've mechanically invented uh, for this game. You have possibly to possibly like, ever. It has to be like draft. You have to like only stickers only. I feel like if you mix it in, it gets fucking weird, right? Yes, because you can put stickers on normal cards. Yeah, that's fucking. When weird. you get into like, like it, it's it's just it's a bummer. It's a bummer mechanic. It's it's just and people were trying to like find out ways around because it's a fucking sticker. You gotta put a sticker on your sleeves and they don't come off easy. So like people were like, well, you can maybe get like you know they were using dry erase, but then you got to make sure you dry erase all your sleeves and it's like. Uh, so I'm all for that ban. I think it was a good move. I think uh, as fun it is as it is within the inf infinity meta i think once it crossed over into other metas uh, i'm just glad our play group that we play in doesn't use stickers ever i've played a game of commander with someone who used stickers and i hated it i nothing against them it looked like a fun deck but it was just like i was like so what does this sticker mean and what is i don't i don't need that in my life i don't need that kind of stress in my life that's all i'm saying i'd like to just i miss the days of when reading the card explain the card but those are long gone you all Lucy becoming Go Yu-Gi-Oh soon baby yeah, I'd gr I'd gladly read ten paragraphs on a card just to know what it does, uh, then have nothing at all. Then look at a sticker. Um, but yeah, because in Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh, things get activated in your deck. <laughs> You're like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. Uh, that's that's my whole news for the week. That's it. Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, <clears throat> we didn't do an update last week. Because we were recording stuff that will hit your podcast feeds. Um, mm -hmm. But Bad Reprint hit up my stream, I believe, uh, on Thursday. Because the first part of my news is uh, Video Game Donkey, if you guys don't know who that is. Um, I didn't really know who this person was until, like, recently. Um, and I didn't realize there's a lot of conversations we had as Nerd On that was, like, kind of affected because of Donkey. <laughs> And I didn't realize yeah. how this person like actually has such a big impact in the gaming community. Um, do, 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 do you remember there was a time when like a lot of IGN like critics were like, um, we don't have special relationships with, with game developers. We just review games. We want to review. Yeah. It was because he, he said like, Oh, they, that's what they do. They, like, they don't actually have real reviews anymore. They always like have that. They want to maintain this relationship with companies so they can mm -hmm. get, you know, perks and stuff like that. And all the IGN critics got like mad about that. Um, and at some point, like you have to take it at like grain of salt on both sides where it's like, you can't say you don't play nice with developers when your goal is to ideally help consumers sift out gra crap from non crap. Um, yeah. especially when so they're costing yourself as at least. Yeah. Especially when you, when, you, when it's costing people money. Um, and then he like would make video essays being like, how does this game get this when this game gets that? How is this? It's like, is it the gaming community? Is it the critics? And he did all this stuff in his comedy way. Anyways, being kind of a staple in video games in, in that sense. Um, uh, he, Jason, developed a, a publishing company 
uh, Big Mode and their first game uh, released on Steam this weekend, uh, which I played on Thursday. And then Brad uh, said there was a lot of gaming news, uh, some of which that Josh wanted to talk about. But I'll let I'll, we'll, we'll, I'll let Josh talk about it. You know, we're we're not here to do breaking news. It's the news that we want to talk about. But Big Mode released Animal Well, which was an indie game. Um, Billy Basso, the creator. Um, I played it for on stream. It is exactly how Dunky says he likes games, and that shit is a hard platformer for me because I suck at platformers. <laughs> but the mechanics are very in depth. Um, the there like the storytelling is all in the ambience ambiance and um okay. and uh yeah it, it's just all about gameplay and mechanics it's not about frills and characters um it's really about puzzles and navigation and then learning the mechanics of the game and getting rewards from for, from solving puzzles uh very uh you know on your own esteem there is no mm-hmm. hand holding there's no de-emphasized crap it's just like you earned the wins that you get from this game um then the week before when or, or i think in the same week i forget no the week before so after the update that we did <clears throat> there was a picture um a picture got released to the world mm-hmm. um uh featuring um uh, uh the the ultimate immigrant the uh <laughs> the second most oh. well-known yeah image next to uh, the 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 Jesus Christ cross, uh, Superman, Ronald McDonald, yep, oh. <laughs> um, David <laughs> Corn's wets, uh, Superman, uh, image was released, and this is all I'm gonna say. I'm I'm not here for any color commentary on the DC world anymore. Are you, it up on the you other know, end? I don't. I'm not. I'm not. You know, whatever. I mean, oh, I could throw it up. Let's throw it. Let's let's throw it for two seconds. One time for the squad, yeah. right? Let's do it. Let's let's. One time it. for the squad. One time for the squad. New Superman. Uh, Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo. You know that's that's just you know you know what I'm saying. Uh, New Superman. Okay, and Skabam. Let's. Why is it? Why is it so much? I have it's so much of the screen. Um. Okay, we'll cover me up. All right. So. Um. This is. Uh, all right, sorry, Corey. Yeah, get a big one. Get a nice big one. I have, I have to cover you up, Corey. Um, That's so fine. this is the new Superman uh, picture uh, that that was that was presented recently, um, and the internet is as the internet does, divisive as shit. Um, so much, so much. So this is. I'm not gonna. Obviously, people love it. Some people hate it. Um, some people like me ask the question, the important questions, like why is Superman in the Dragon Ball Z world where Goku and Vegeta are fighting behind him? <laughs> Cause that's a Gallic gun, baby. <laughs> that, that, I don't know what that is. That's a Gallic gun. Um, 100%. uh, but an overall consensus, most people, people who like it, people who don't like it will say that this film this 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 image looks ai generated um which is not the response exactly what i said when you sent it to me it's not the response you want to get when (laughs) when you release something uh like this i think this was like the the big uh the big issue or the big uh article that came out uh that a lot of people were like very uh discerned with but um no i mean it's the new image uh a lot of people took to the internet to you know respond with their takes uh what they missed about other superhero supermans other first looks uh a lot of people were just talking about um matt reeves and how he presented the new batman and it was a, a video. It wasn't an image, uh, and it was to the you know the the theme. And so it was in the red room, and everyone was like, "Oh, blah blah blah." And so, um, that's all I'm gonna say. If you want to know my opinions or thoughts, 
Follow, ask me on Discord because I'm not gonna say yay or nay, obviously. Um, because you know, I mean, we'll I'll see. say, I'll say, I'm nowhere in hockey pants. <laughs> <laughs> Throw back. No, uh, it's just funny that I, I, I didn't know that that was the whole thing. I said that to Tom. He sent that to me. I think the day it came out, and I was like, said AI. He's like, no, dog, it's this. And I was like, oh, okay uh so yeah it does it looks very uh, yeah th- that was the follow-up image tom sent uh <laughs> <to me. laughs> i'm on this tom i'm on this fucking deep dive now about Zack snyder lord of the rings Zacky snacky <laughs> peter jackie uh oh, shit i already love look i already love Zack snyder like i i'm i uh i mean obviously not not to the same extent that that tom has championed his work for much longer than i have but i've always been a fan i haven't had a time where i'm like i don't like Zack snyder stuff i've since 300 i've been like i like what this guy makes um but man i am at my whole feed now my my whole feed has shifted to to that and i'm not mad about it Zacky snacky and peter jackie shaking hands what's what's the song <laughs> bridge of casa casa dune bridge of casa dune yeah man uh after gandalf's death i had no idea dude as soon as that first trailer started i'm not even gonna spoil this for anyone but go watch the man of steel trailer i was like wait a sec i don't what do i what do i know this from what do i know this from and then i clicked the second link and i was like that's what's up it was and always was like, gonna be do that i was like warner brothers it's warner brothers they can use whatever music they want, but it, it's perfect. It's perfect. Uh, so uh, yeah, Man, Man of Steel first teaser. That's yeah. Uh, I'll see if I can, question I can in see the if chat. I can link it. Um, you so yeah, Animal Well, Superman. Um, what else did I say was news that was going to happen that I want to talk about? Oh, um, this one's actually sad, and I wish I started with this first. Um, so everyone knows in the industry, Hollywood, TV, filmmaking, uh, last year was a terrible year, a lot of strikes, all this converse, existential crisis and shit. Um, and this year started out not that great either because post-strike and all this shit, recession hit and a lot of difficulties in uh, the industry. I am a byproduct of that, obviously, um, with a, a, an Emmy-winning show uh, after the Super Bowl and we still got canceled. So um, that being said, uh, there was a lot of murmurs and rumors of potential more strikes happening with IATSE. And uh, I believe it was yesterday or today, um, a crew member from the 911 show passed away because they were exhausted driving home after a 14-hour shift. Um, And this is kind of the... Fallout. Um, in twenty twenty one, there was a sh- pending strike happening uh, with IATSE. They had the votes. They had the they had the people saying like, "We will strike if we can't reach an agreement." And union leaders. So far, the narrative has kind of panned out that the union leaders went behind the entire union's back, the people, and just signed some agreement to to get them whatever to just continue production because I think people were so sore and wanted to come back to work after the shutdowns. Um, and this is one of those things where it's like terrible work conditions. And it's not like, yes, we live in Hollywood. Yes, we do get paid, you know, sometimes more than minimum wage. Sometimes it's minimum wage, sometimes even less than that. Um, and it's about making deals and it's about opportunities. Uh, but also, uh, that gets conflated a lot with, uh, breaking your back in order to, um, fix problems that could have been easily solved if everyone was trying to make the same movie. That's a phrase. Are we making the same movie? Um, and uh, yeah, it's a really tragic thing. So if there was, there was a lot of question if IATSE was actually going to strike. And then now this kind of tends to be like tipping the scales, moving the needle closer to like, if this doesn't galvanize people to be like, hey, it, it hasn't gotten fixed in three years, then we need to work work on it now. Uh, which could spell problems for people who are trying to re-enter the workforce of the filmmaking industry. But, you know, it's one of those things like, do you ever want to get back to normal or do we want to go get to better, right? And uh, it takes a lot of sacrifice, um, which is hard. It's a very hard thing to say, hear, understand, process. 
um, and swallow at all. So, uh, yeah, just keep an eye on that. There might be more of your favorite things taking a bigger dip after a while. Um, all right. Now we can move on to some questions. Now, Corey, I wasn't here the last time I think we did an update, right? Because – no, 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 I was. Uh, but mm-hmm. – I don't know what questions you guys a- answered uh, when I wasn't here. Two weeks prior. Two weeks prior. I'll let you know uh, if I remember. Okay. Well, the question I have here, the first, okay, this is actually the, this first question. Everyone, if you want to be part of the show oh, and send when you qu- weren't here, uh, Josh just said we're going to do oops, all chat questions. Only chat questions. Yeah. So we're good on anything okay. that's written down. Well then. Uh, well then, everyone. Um, uh if you want to uh be part of the show yes do exactly what josh said uh and uh, put your your questions in the chat live or uh send it to us uh via nerdon.tv slash questions or nerdon.tv slash discord by joining the community for free and then answering in there or support the show support what we do make sure we can make more of these good videos and podcasts for you we are cooking them up and you're going to see a lot of them just kind of come in rapid succession and they take a long time. And with your help, we can make them faster and better and with more people. Um, nerdon.tv slash Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. And you get all the stuff early. And I've been sending the, the, the X-Men reactions hella early. Like, hella early. Like, y'all, y'all had that like a month ago and we just <laughs> released it. So, like, I make sure you guys get it hella early. Um... So do that, please help us out, and you can answer, ask us questions. This is the first time question being asked by Harry Perry thirteen. The reason why I know it's the first time is because they're not in my bucket sheet, but now they will be. Harry Perry hey. thirteen asked a question that bad reprint had a huge answer. You guys could check it out in Discord, but the question is, if you could put any IP into a battle royale style game, what would you choose? Star Wars, Disney Animation, Predator, Transformers. Kenshin. What do you say? Kenshin. Battle Royale? I think it'd be fun. No, I guess that's more of a fighting game, huh? I mean maybe more like a You're getting a fighting I mean, battle, game yeah, yeah battle okay. royale i feel like is a little bit more survivally right you're like you land yeah. and then you're like because like kenshin i'm like you're getting awfully close to dynasty warriors right there yeah yeah yeah. um would battle royale was like overwatch town is battle royale i guess nope what is that ba- uh battle uh, overwatch is uh is team firefights team firefights yeah it's pvp firefight mm. battle royale is 1v 50 plus uh okay um and then typically you don't have any items and you just hunt and search for it for me i mean predator is a great one but the thing is about predator it's best as an asymmetrical right one predator versus dozens of people but like if you're trying to do true battle royale where it's like you guys are all surviving against each other i mean pull my headphones out um now it's a show yeah okay oh yeah 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 PUBG Fortnite okay um I mean good question bro force oh I mean (laughs) um I mean they can already have it right I mean isn't that a game alien alien the isolation like the not survival isolation. game there's another one i think it's alien firefight no i played alien firefight it's not even like that Firefight's either it's a team game yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a it's a that's a four person or a three person team versus it's like pve alien would be sick alien could be sick alien could be sick i like i uh i mean hell divers is a team game yeah I mean, I yeah. don't know. I think probably Terminator is probably the best one I could imagine. Terminator is a great answer. I think Terminator is uh, the best one I can imagine. Like, 
characters, you know, and then like you're, you're hunting for your weapons. Hopefully, you get it before a Terminator comes in. And if, I'm gonna like, say Looney Tunes. Ooh. Oh, speaking of, dude, Marvel Rivals looks pretty good. It un- <laughs> it does, but I, was like, I didn't want to. I just didn't want to. It's like it so much as I did. I watched some oh, yeah. um, some gameplay, and I was like. It's Overwatch, it. but on Marvel, and I love the Overwatch game. I feel like the uh, handling of it is terrible. <laughs> like, roll queue, um, like, just the lack of different kind of games, and then also getting, like, steamrolled into, like, the bad bandwidth and P2, uh, P2P yeah. uh, kind of matchmaking sucks ass. But, like, gameplay-wise, Overwatch is insane. I love Overwatch, yeah. especially if you have, like, two, three people. I love that shit. And doing that in a Marvel sense, I'm like, you play a Spider-Man, Doctor Strange could open a portal, you could pop out another... It, Doctor Strange is Symmetra. Um, yeah. yeah. You got Spider-Man being Widowmaker. Uh, you got the Hulk being Reinhardt. And I was like, these are, these are the same characters, just in different... You know, they're using the skin of Marvel. And I'm like, okay, will it be good? I don't know. Who knows? But uh, uh, I think Terminator is the right answer for that question. Terminator. Looney Tunes is my close second, just Looney because T- it'd be fun. I mean, the cool thing you do with Looney Tunes is all the weapons and all the items you can get. Just yeah. get ac- all the Acme stuff. All the and, Acme yeah. stuff, man. Yeah. Um, good question. Yeah. Good question. Thank you. I like that question. That's Harry fun. Perry thirteen. Okay, next question is gonna be from Brad. I don't know if we answered this question before, but I feel like. I don't know your answer. Brad asks, this question's for Nerd On After Dark. Oh, yeah. Why is it After Dark? Angela White. Because After Dark would mean morning. Why can't it be? Why I, would think, it... I think After Dark implies that after it's gotten dark. Like, after. Oh, come home darkness. before dark. Yeah. Don't stay out after yeah. dark. Yeah. It just I sounds the, the like broken language. I think I I agree, but yeah. I think the implication within the zeitgeist of humanity is that oh, yeah. it's like there's a there's a point where it gets dark, and that is what they're referring to. Mm. Uh, well, nerd on in the dark. <laughs> um, yeah, no, nerd on after dark. Uh, do you have any special pieces of media that are a little more on the spicy side? Do we have special pieces of media that are on the spice? Or favorite? Any, do you have any favorite pieces? Oh, oh, I was like, we don't make anything. <laughs> we don't make I mean, anything like that, baby. I mean, Corey, one could argue that uh, a lot of the podcasts pre shutdown. Uh, I don't know if you guys, audience members, we're gonna, as Josh, they pull the veil back a little bit. Um, I used to get in trouble all the time from listeners and audiences because I would have too much of a potty mouth. So, I mean, like, technically, every episode was after dark. Yeah, you did. It was really f- I forgot about that. That was really funny. Yeah, dude. Like, uh, um, <laughs> pretty... <laughs> a little brother coming in with the cum joke, or now I do it. Now I'm the guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's about it's about the, the mm-hmm. choosing your moment, Tom. I cummed. Uh, I, I about cummed. <laughs> Um, let's see. I mean, there was definitely a stream where we found out someone had feet pics on their. <laughs> uh, Brad, I don't. Remember I mean, that. we all have feet pics. It just depends at how old are were our feet at that time. That's true. Uh, do we have a piece of favorite media that's a bit spicy. I, I mean, I have one. I don't know. If this counts as spicy though. Mm. You know, you know how they say like, do you have like a. What's that called? A guilty pleasure? I don't. Yeah. Um. Nothing. Nothing pleasurable for me is guilty. I'm just like, mm, I like this. This shit. Mm-mm. It just touches me in a way I I don't normally get touched. Um, I think it's the YouTube channel. I think it's called the People's Audit. I think. Um. Yeah. It's a YouTube channel dedicated to, uh, <laughs> people schooling cops when cops are trying to like wrongfully pull them over. Um. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I've seen that, Tom. I right fucking you. love that YouTube channel. Um, I watch that shit when I'm feeling pretty. People's Court Audit. Um, I love that channel. That channel 
uh, takes me to a place of just being like, because most of the time it's like, hey, know your rights, everyone. Like, don't let people like obstruct your thing. And sometimes there is like an asshole who's just like, I am walking into a public library and they don't want me there. And then the cops get called and he's like, don't. And I was like, hey, you know, technically there's wrong on both sides, literally. Um, but I, I, I like watching that shit. Um, spicy. I don't know if it's spicy, but it's like one of those things like you can't find it. You have to like go like, you know, and people on the Internet who are like familiar with daily motion, you know, like that's where you go to find not really legal things to find not like snuff shit not bad shit but it's like oh these are these are ripped movies these are like tv shows that you're not supposed to be fi- fine my answer would probably be food wars is that like food food you mean the the anime is that is that spicy is that is that a little food, spice? Is it because of the food spicy is that why is that the joke nope it's got some spicy in there is, is it a little little nakey is there a little? That's uh, drawn, drawn, drawn. Di- she's built suggestively she's drawn different. Yeah. Um. Uh. More know. sexual or lewd nature. Okay, sexual or lewd. Uh, favorite piece. Baldur's Gate se- three. <laughs> no. Uh. I mean, any of those Bioware Bethesda games have the romance in them, right? That's that's probably as spicy as I get as far as pieces of media that I have. Okay. Um. Um, media, uh, read the manga Ron Mahaff. Um, do you know what that is, Corey? Ron Mahaff? No, no. Ron Mahaff is a manga where a dude and his dad, Ron Ma and his dad, are like martial artists, are like ex- excellent martial artists, and they go train at this forbidden forest, hidden pools, and they, they train on the bamboo sticks and they fight. You know why it's forbidden? You know why it's hidden? All the pools what? is where someone has drowned. <laughs> oh, and, shit. Like, a dog drowned here, a, a woman drowned here, a cat drowned here, a panda drowned here. Those two fall into their own pools, and they are cursed. And so whenever they touch hot water or cold water, they turn into that thing. Mm, and Rama okay. ends up turning into a girl half the time. As a boy in the second grade reading that shit, I saw a lot of, a lot of boobies. I saw a lot more <laughs> boobies than I think I was supposed to ever see. Um, so Ron Mahaff. <laughs> and uh, Ron Mahaff. There you go. You can check out Hyperspeed Grand Doll. Um, that's a, a little mini anime. Um, it's like Magical Schoolgirl uh, Transformation. Imagine Magical Schoolgirl Transformation, except they get naked. And you're like, that's not the, they don't do that in Sailor Moon. They don't show that part. <laughs> You know, it's kind of like in Dragon Ball Z when they don't show the nipple, and then all of a sudden they do show the nipple. Yeah. You're like, huh? What the fuck is that? Wait a sec. And it's like, hold on. Um. So that that's a spicy. I'll I'll I could post up a bunch of spicy stuff on on the Discord. We'll we'll leave it off the air. Um. Next question. I think we yeah. answered this one, but I forget if you answer this question. Spencer thirteen asked, "What do you think is your future Star Wars prequel or Andrew Garfield Spider Man moment?" What? What does this mean? I mean, read, read again, Spencer. I love you. Um, the verbatim is: What are do you think your future Star Wars prequel or Andrew Garfield Spider-Man moments will be? I don't exactly know, but what I'm gleaning mm-hmm. is Star Wars prequel, as in like our favorite moment of the Star Wars prequel that will like have its fruition later on. Like how Andrew Garfield had his fruition in No Way Home. Oh yeah, I like this question. What is the prequel <laughs> moment that? Well, we had the Obi Wan series, uh, which, with Liam Neeson's, uh, being called out to throughout the whole the whole series. Um, I think I, I just think. But what would I want? Here's the thing. I think we've had a lot of prequel stuff coming to fruition, right? Or like returns of stuff. Like in the animated series, we had Darth Maul come back because he was so popular. Darth Maul, they were just like, just write him. How did he, how did he live? Off hate. He lived off hate and spider legs. Um, Those spider legs were so cool. I know. So 
what would be my prequel Star Wars moment a la Andrew Carfield and Homecoming? I like this question. I'm going to think on this for a second. Do you have one already? Did you do one? I do have one. Let's hear it. I think it's Daisy Ridley reprises her role of Rey Skywalker, and she gets so good with the Force that she like is training maybe the next generation of, of Jedi, and then they're like, but Master Skywalker, why don't you ever booba dooba do whatever, right? Um, and she's like, I have to like go into the meditative state and then talk with the Jedi's of my past. Where the fuck? And she's like, I'm gonna try to reach for Luke. Doesn't answer. Try to reach for Master Yoda. Doesn't answer. Try to reach for Anakin. Doesn't answer. Try to reach for Leia. Doesn't answer. But she ends up getting Padamame, reprised by Natalie Portman. And this bitch looks like an angel. And then I'll be like, she is an angel. She is an angel. I like that. Did it say prequel or sequel? It said your future Star Wars prequel. Okay. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it could cool. be anything. <laughs> yeah, Spence, hit us up in the Discord and let us know uh, if we answered this correctly for you. Because I really like this question. There's a couple of different ways it could be. Yes, if it's if it's sequel, like that's fun to play with too. Like it well, would to be, be dope. It's, it's like doing a prequel thing into a sequel for me. Like it would be it would be dope if like you combine both, which is cool. You made the sequel and the prequels marry each other in that moment. I think it would be dope if we get um another Star Wars show. I'm I actually like the shows didn't love the sequels but i'm actually i'm enjoying i'd say 90 percent of the star wars shows that i've watched that have come out i've enjoyed with save for one series have you watched um them all? andor i uh yes i've watched andor ahsoka watched andor. oh dude uh, Andor's gonna be your favorite one like, i know hands down i know um, everything not star wars i love <laughs> I'm excited for the new one coming out. Uh, is it Jedi Deci- or Star Wars Disciple or Acolyte? Carry on, Moth. Acolyte, thank you. But I, I want us to get one that is in the time of. Or maybe we'll get it. I don't know. Anyway, I want there to be some sort of. We have a, a heroine or a hero uh, who is is training to be a Jedi, you know, finds himself against someone, boom, lights, they're about to get struck down, boom, lightsaber comes in, blocks it, zooms out, it's Finn. Finn's been training, baby. Finn, there were so many hints, and I know it was talked about in interviews, that Finn was supposed to be able to use the Force. And there was, like, in the third movie, there were lines that were still left over from when that was a storyline about how he feels, and he wants to talk to Rey. He's like, I want to talk to you about something, I want to talk to you about something. And it was going to be he's a force i've been i I can do these i've been having these visions i can do these things uh and if they brought that like full circle and someone dave filoni looked at it and was just like let's make that happen let's make that canon i would be so happy because i don't think in my lifetime i've seen such a wasted character (laughs) in, in such a big franchise um so i think and that says something because I was a Andrew Garfield fan uh, in the Amazing Spider-Man series. So, uh, yeah, I would love that. I would love Finn to have been training and is here to fuck some shit up. Um, but I don't even know if he'll work with Disney anymore. Uh, so, oh, <laughs> all the time. It's so funny. Like, I feel like there's so many cool things that happen. <laughs> like I'm, I'm recently watching this new anime called Kaiju Number Nine or Number Eight, um, mm-hmm. and I really like it. And um, uh, I'm watching all these different animes, right? And I'm like, I'm doing all these things, and I'm like, having a bunch of different like things you can get into is fun. And you're like, oh, what a good time to be alive. And then you think about what like all the fundamental fumbles that have happened. It's just like. Finn absolutely became nothing. And you're like, he could have been like the leader of the rebellion. It would have been really cool. I mean, this is the thing. If they wanted to go ballsy, baby. If they wanted to, Poe dies, and then Finn is like, I had to become the leader of the rebellion. And you're like, that's fucking badass. And then like he's just like, 
I trained like as a stormtrooper. I will train you like stormtroopers. And you're like, oh fuck, this shit's gonna be crazy. And uh, but you know, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, like I, I'm actually pretty hyped for uh, the new House of Dragons season. Like, like I that that like everyone shit talks Game of Thrones, but I'm like, man, that show is good. That sh- House of Dragons is good. Like, you know what? I realized, Corey, I call it little dragon fuckers. Is that accurate? <laughs> eh, pretty, pretty accurate. You know, so Corey, you never watched Succession, right? Mm-mm. Do you Not think yet. you ever will? Yeah. You can spoil something. I don't care. Well, no, no, no. Because like the thing is, you didn't like Game of Thrones, and you tried. You did your fucking damnedest. Tried. I don't know if you would like Succession because this is what my thing is. Like, so Game of Thrones is a low fantasy, right? The most extravagant thing are zombies and dragons. Nothing like orcs and wizards and shit. Um, there is a sorceress mm-hmm. though, but like the magic is like fucking insane. So like, I don't know if it tickles your fancy, right? Where like succession is like, to me, succession and game of Thrones are like very similar. Cause it's like very much like, it's just political intrigue and just like, who's fucking with who next for, you know, four uh, four dimensional tr- uh, chess. And, uh, like, I, I like, that's how I feel with house of dragons where I'm like, man, this shit is like, you're talking about one, uh, your the Star Wars shows you've liked. I can imagine what the ten percent you didn't like was, and I really wished that was like Game of Thrones. And I was like, "Fuck that! That's how it could have been. That's how it could have been. Could have been." But uh, been. anyways, uh, next question. Yeah. Uh, let's answer a question from T Dog. Because I think out. I've been holding on to this question for a long time because I needed to find the right group. Um, what's like your the right group is just us. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite underrated anime? Oh. Uh, wait, wait. I think we've answered this because you know what it is. I mean, I don't think we've answered it here, but I think we know because you've said it before. <laughs> It's Bacchino, Bacchino. baby. <laughs> so underrated. That shit it's so is... underrated. I never heard of it. I still have never heard of it afterwards. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's so, so fucking good. It is so like, I, yeah, it's one of those ones I've never heard someone talk about. Nate and I found it like year, like 2012. I want to say we watched it. We were like, I think we watched it all in one night. Like we were just fucking enthralled with it. Um, yeah, I don't find it anywhere on the small like subreddits I've seen here and there. People who do talk about it talk about it the way I do, where they're like, "It's fucking gold." Why isn't more people talking about this show? Uh, but I think the I think the um, you know the benchmark of getting in is high. I think it's it takes a lot of uh, a lot of things that good animes do is they have episodes that establish a lot, and this show just goes keep up or get off the fucking train um it doesn't give a fuck if you need to be spoon-fed shit um and if you're in for that you're in for a ride but i can understand how that the 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 bar to entry is high on that barrier to entry thank you that's what if you're not uh, someone who's watched a lot of anime um most underrated anime um I don't know if it's really underrated. I feel like people talk about it, but they don't really give it its merits. Is a uh, big O. Um, I liked Big O a lot because it was very much like, uh, what's his face? I was gonna say Spike Spiegel. Uh, Steve Blum voices him, and it's pretty much if That's Batman Spiegel. wasn't Batman, but Bruce Wayne had a mobile suit. And was like a professional negotiator with against criminals, um, and but the thing is, I forget the name of the city. Every episode opens up like in this city, no one has their memories. So fucking noir, so fucking smoky room, uh, shit. Because in this universe, something happened, and then everyone lost their memories of what happened thirty years ago. Yeah. So, like, or, like, 10 years ago. So, like, there is truly this dome of a world where, like, Brad, you'd fucking love this shit. Because it's, like, okay, what happened? Like, the world ended. Everyone survived in these domes. Yet there's these giant machines. And sometimes they come and fight. 
Other times, people are just like kidnapping motherfuckers, and he's got this door, this this android named Dorothy, and you're like, you're like constantly trying to piece the world together. And the times you don't get answers, it's still it's just so much more intriguing. And at the end of it all, like the entire thesis of the show is that the answer to your questions is not going to be what fulfills you in life. It's the pursuit of those answers. And it's like, we're not ruled by our memories. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, it was such a mind trip, especially because it was on Cartoon Network or Toonami. It wasn't on Adult Swim. So it was like TV rated enough for kids, but it mm-hmm. dealt with a lot of these heady existential things that you're like, what the fuck? Um, but yeah, so I, I, w- I would say Big O. Big O. I like that. I'm going to check that out. I was looking at it. You're not going to like it. About it. Oh, okay. Giant Why? robot. Oh, because giant robot. All right. I mean, Thank I, like, I like the answer. giant robot, and all the parts outside giant robot are fine. But like, every every other episode, it ends with the third act fighting a robot. Oh yeah, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Uh, so uh, I off. think the reason I think I remember this question because I thought Josh said Bacano. Maybe someone asked someone similar. Um, but he said Bacano. I was like, I'll pick something else. I said Gungrave. Gungrave is my other answer for underrated mm-hmm. animes. Tom, you would like Gungrave. Have I seen Gun? I don't think I've seen Gungrave. Uh, I might have seen Gungrave a is time ago. sick. 2003 to 2004, I think it was out. It's only like Do you a remember or two. when G4 TV used to have uh, anime late at night? Yeah. I feel like that showed there. I feel like Gungrave was That's on That's I think show. I probably figured it out. Because the thing is also, man, G4 was so great because it was so new and you couldn't tell what was happening. Because I think their programming fucking was, like, fucking sucked. I think their program, whoever was in charge of programming just, like, didn't know what the fuck to do. Like, there was no plan. It was just, like, one day's all anime. One day's all Attack of the Show. One day's all, like, X, X, whatever. And I was like, what the fuck? Uh, X Play. And other other days, like, all Japanese game shows. And you're like, and then one day. So, like, I feel like I, I might have probably caught an episode but i haven't seen it um okay so do we want to do one more question since we came in a little late or is that all the time you got core yeah all right yeah yeah, yeah. let's do one more okay so i'll i'll ask the brad question in chat what's something people say is underrated that you think should absolutely keep its low rating (laughs) oh something that's underrated and you're like i get it i get why that's underrated uh a really good question it's not something people say is bad that should that you go yeah it's bad it's people that people are like you know what's good and you go not nah, dog um and tom just comes in Baca, no. <laughs> no 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 tom like bacano the second watch the second time around oh yeah, yeah. i um, like i liked it um and i get it and like it's the same it's it's, it's, it's again it's like a guy right a guy richie movie it's mm-hmm. not for everyone and I, I can absolutely see why people are like, oh, I might, I might, I might not like it. Um, something that's underrated that should keep its underratedness. Gundams. I mean, that's not underrated at all. They're that's not so underrated, big. Though. They're that's not so underrated. Big. Um, yeesh. I think... The Green Lantern it's movie? A, That's not even question. underrated. This is a hard question. It is hard because you have to think what's underrated and do you agree that it's, that it's not it, that it's not that great? Yeah, because I'm trying to think of things. I, Tom and I have this discussion a lot where we try not to – I mean, we could say th- we didn't enjoy something or, or whatever, but we try to meet things at where their merits are and look for the accolades – um i wasn't always that way i think if you had asked me this question before we started the podcast if you asked me this question before we started the podcast i'd say the schumacher batmans um but i've watched them too many times since and understand their importance in the zeitgeist and what they were modeling themselves off of and i think they're underrated as well for what they're worth um especially batman forever i think batman forever is yeah go ahead Batman Forever is my first Batman. Baby! Um, yeah. 
uh, T-Dog, uh, just because a movie is well hated doesn't make it underrated. <laughs> I feel like if generally most people don't like it, doesn't mean underrated. I feel like people are like, oh, that's such a good movie. Why isn't it blah, blah, blah. Um, the Alien movie we saw for the 30 Days of Horror. Um, no one's coming to save oh, you. Oh, yeah. No one's coming to save you. Let me, let me, let me triple check. Caitlin Deaver. Um, no one will save you. No one will save you. 2023 Hulu film. Caitlin Deaver. Right? Caitlin Deaver? Yeah, Caitlin Deaver. She's great. The movie's great. I like it a lot. Um, but it should be... It's 100%. I think it's... it's Not because I, I don't like it and not because I do like it. Um, but everyone's like, oh, why didn't it do well? It's like, I 100% know why it didn't do well. And all 100... Like, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's going to be like this. The trailers don't, do, don't tell you this movie is going to be um lacking dialogue and in the same way everyone's like well quiet place and it's like in quiet place there is an in-universe reason why no one talks in mm -hmm. no one will save you there is no actual reason no one talks other than the artistic direction of the film and that's why i think like cory and i did cory Corey yeah. attempted to jump on to this 30 days of horror things. I did he, most like, dropped of it. off around like oh, 12. Yeah. Uh, yeah 12, 12, some people dropped off. Like there were other groups that tried to do it. They dropped off after this one. And this was the first movie. Really? Yeah. After and they're like, I couldn't, they're like, I couldn't get into it. And I was like, I get it. Like, I was just like, Oh, Oh, I get it. I think we I talked about it. it. And I was like, and you're like, no, no, no. That, I felt the same. And I was like, okay, cool. I was alone on that feeling on the ending. Uh, I, uh, I'm still racking my brain about movies that someone said is, I think the problem is, and I, I'm seeing the, the comments in chat where people are like, you know, it's dislike things. I'm, I can think of a lot of things that people say are amazing that I'm like, ah, I don't get it. But to think of something that people are like, this is underrated. And I'm like, I think you're right. I think it's right to remain there is harder for me to find. Because I also, I also, I think I also tend to root for underdogs in that situation. Um, I can't think of something that, because I can think of a lot of like La La Land, I, I think deserves not the praise it gets, but it, it does. And that's, that's easy for, I can name more things that way where I'm like, people say this is amazing. I'm like, I don't see it, but good for you. Um, Could be a game or a comic book or a book. Yeah. Uh, underrated. I'll say this. I think Among Us. <laughs> Among Us isn't underrated though, is it? Because people no. love that shit. <laughs> no. That's my thing, is I can find a lot of shit people love that I wasn't so hyped on. Also uh, maybe underrated um I think Lorcana. I I've watched some videos and tried to learn how to play it and I I get it. I get why it's under and I think it deserves to be underrated right now. It just hasn't had time to develop into a real game. It hasn't. It's had three sets that have come out, and it'll it'll get there. But I, think I will that's... say though, man, I saw some cards, some like sets for Digimon. Flesh and Blood, I think, is the, is the better one. I've tried. I I love the Professor as much as anyone, but I've watched some gameplay on Flesh and Blood, and I've watched some how to play it, and I'm like, I get it. I get why this isn't taken off in the same the same way. I I saw some packs for uh, Digimon trading card game. I'm like, oh, it's so cheap. That's so good. I love fucking Digimon. I love Digimon. Fucking, you got a lizard one second, hot girl the next. Like, how how can you say no? That's some spicy, <laughs> some spicy media. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there you go. All right. Well, thank yeah, you yeah. everyone for bearing with us a little bit later start, and then uh, our yeah, last question. It, guys. All good. All good. We all got lives. Um, everyone in the chat. I want you to do some before we go ahead and raid over to your Moonstone. I need you guys to go over to the YouTube channel. I need you to go to the YouTube channel, check out our latest videos, go ahead and like them, go ahead and make a comment, go ahead and say, like, hey, we love this. YouTube, shut the fuck up. You suck. Tom's been working his ass off <laughs> on those. Shout out um, to Tom. Just any free time he's had. And and then for the future stuff, if you're on the Patreon, do that too. And then any new stuff outside of the updates that we re upload, do the same thing. You got to like it, you got to share it, and do, do one of those things. And, you know, it just, it, it, that, 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 that would make us happy. All right. Well, let's go ahead and raid over to your Moonstone. Playing Poke, what the hell is Poke Rogue? Oh, that's an emulator? Okay. Um, Hell yeah. 
and uh yeah give them our best hydrate take care of yourselves uh yes episode five of the x-men react is on patreon for lows of dollars a month you can already see it um thank you Corey, for coming in tonight after a busy day and um everybody we'll see you all next time you all know the drill as always nerd on nerd on